Welcome back to the second episode of Thrombotic Thrombocytopenic Purpura. And today we'll be discussing about the current and new treatments in TTP management. I'm um, Jamila Sathar and I'm a hematologist from Ampang Hospital, Malaysia. I'm Mandy Yap, a hematologist from Ampang Hospital as well. Um, can you tell me the current treatment options that are available in the management of thrombotic thrombocytopenic papyrus? Oh, yes, certainly, Dr. Jamila. Um, the current treatment that we are treating our TTP patient is with plasma exchange uh, or, and also with administration of corticosteroids with or without the rituximab and for the acquired TTP. Yeah. So for those who once we plasma has changed after a few days, the platelet will be um, improved to more than 50,000. Then we will consider to give them thromboprophylaxis as well, just to prevent thrombosis. Now the problem is um, we are facing quite a number of challenges. I think there's now Dr. Jamila share some of her view as well regarding the availability of uh, plasma exchange facilities in all hospitals in Malaysia, as well as to have a dedicated aphoresis uh, nursing team uh, to do it uh, over like 24 hours, 7 for us. And also the plasma exchange itself is actually pretty expensive with the plasma exchange sets amounts to like 1,000 ringgit uh, per set. And, also, and as well as when we want to ask for pathogen inactivated plasma, it's very difficult. It's not readily available. And not to forget about insertion of the catheter, you know, femoral catheter, especially with the single digit of platelets is really challenging. And most of the time, we are not supposed to transfuse the platelet in this um, fatal disorder as we feel the thrombosis more in this DTP. Uh, so the indwelling catheter, of course, it comes with a lot of complications like bleeding, infections, as well as um, thrombosis as well. And the procedure itself is labor intensive, of course. And of course, we expose patient to plasma. They also at risk of developing a fluid overload, allergic reaction, anaphylaxis, and also all those um, transfusion associated lung in acute lung injury, and uh, also all those uh, citrate toxicity as well. So yeah. So Dr. Jamila, yeah. um, to overcome all these challenges, are there any new treatment approaches that are um, being researched as well as how might they impact the care of the patients with TTP, both acquired and congenital? Yes, uh, I think there are two treatment options, new treatment options that are available, but however, they are not registered in our country, Malaysia. Um, the first is Kaplazizumab, which is an immunoglobulin fragment against the A1 domain of the von Willebrand factor, um, preventing it from binding to platelets. As you know, the, the pathophysiology of TTP is the high molecular, high molecular weight um, multimus of von Willebrand factor, um, a, a, which binds the platelet, causing microthrombosis in the small vessels of uh, our body and causing an organ damage. And so this um, uh, immunoglobulin targets the one vibrant factor such that it does not bind to platelets, hence preventing the microvascular thrombosis, uh, uh, which, which causes uh, high uh, uh, mortality in patients with TTP. Um, the other um, um, new treatment, um, which is actually undergoing phase three trials, it's the recombinant uh, Adam TS13 and uh, protein, uh, which um, at the moment um, the trials are being carried out for congenital thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura, and also some smaller star, uh, as trials for the acquired TTP. And there are no results yet, but the, there, there are no um, I mean there are no res full results yet, but there are preliminary results to show that. It actually mimics the enzyme very well, yeah, with good pharmacokinetics and with not much um, immunogenicity. Um, and uh, yeah, I do hope that this this protein will yeah will be made available soon. Um, perhaps it may actually reduce the uh, or eliminate. The, plasma, the therapeutic plasma exchange for these uh, for these patients, you know, that would be a game changer, I would think. 
Uh, yeah, Dr. Jamila, thank you for that exciting molecules. Yeah, I think we're all waiting for it. And I recently actually went to Hammersmith Hospital in London uh, to do my attachment. Um, so I actually noticed they have incorporated Kaprazizumab as part of their standard of care for TTP, whereby they will get back their results, Adam's DS13, within 72 hours. It's pretty um, efficient, you know. And they can actually, uh, once they get back, if it's above 20%, they will just stop the Kaprazizumab and will not proceed. Any plasma is changed and consider other diagnosis, whereby, like Dr. Jamla said, it will just reduce a lot of uh, plasma uh, volumes exposure in the patients unnecessarily. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I recall the study, the Hercules study for Kaprazizumab, right? The study which actually showed that it reduces the time for platelet recovery and it reduces uh, recurrences as well of TTP and also re reduce the risk of thromboembolic complications. So we hope that this uh, new drug would be made available soon. Yeah, it's yeah. not registered in Malaysia yet, right? Yes. Yeah, so mm -hmm. we hope that this thing will ultimately change mm -hmm. the management of our patients. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Jamila, with your vast experience in TTP management, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so do you think we will have the Kaprazizumab to be a state of care yeah. in the future, really? Yeah, of course, these, these drugs are all very expensive. Yes, a difficult question. But I think that we should actually, you know, first and foremost, of course, we should get the Adam TS13 assays um, to get the results done, uh, you know, within, uh, within an hour, if possible. So we hope to, you know, I mean, I, I, I do hope that the rapid test kit will be made available soon so that we will get, we can confirm the diagnosis of TTP early and with that we can reduce the unnecessary plasma exchanges for uh, the other conditions that may mimic TTP. And with that, you know, by reducing uh, the unnecessary plasma exchange, we can actually save a lot of costs and with that, you know, cost saving, we can actually put that money to purchase uh, this expensive medication. Yeah. Mm. But the cornerstone of um, treatment for TTP is still therapeutic plasma exchange. So if you uh, suspect, you know, if you have a high level of suspic a suspicion for TTP, best to institute plasma exchange because, as you know, this is a lethal disorder and a clinical judgment is always, yeah, is always the, the best one. Yeah. And what are you, uh, your views, Dr. Mandy? Uh, my views? <laughs> well, if I happen to be a TTP patient, honestly, I really wish that I can uh, receive the recombinant Adams ds 13 enzyme, you know, therapy. Because I, I read through the literature. Uh, apparently, this um, molecule, they managed to design it to overcome the not being, um, uh, like, attacked by the autoantibodies, like used to be... Um, uh, destroying the wild type of the Adams DS13 uh, enzyme. So I feel that if I can get this and uh, become the game changer, I do not uh, need to be exposed to all this uh, risk of transfusion, transmitted infection, catheter-related thrombosis, and infection citrate toxicity, as I mentioned just now. Mm -hmm. I think that would be really good, Dr. Jamila. Yes, yes. You know, whenever I have a patient with TTP, I thought we have sleepless nights, you know. Yeah, I think we are, we're just waiting for the new treatment for TTP. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Dr. Jamila, what do you think? Any parting words of wisdom for this? I think, I think we have come a long way, right? From, I think TTP was a recognized condition way back in 1924 mm -hmm. by Moskowitz. Correct. I get my dates you're, you're, right. You're right. And we were actually doing plasma exchange without realizing... I mean, what we are actually exchanging for, but it worked. And then it took another, I think, another 100 years before we discovered this enzyme, Adam TS13, and, and the pathophysiology behind TTP. And, I, you know, it's really amazing how this condition, you know, how the scientists have worked so hard. Yeah, and we are actually, hopefully, we are probably in the next... Few uh, in soon, I hope that we will be able to find a cure for this uh, lethal condition. You know, yeah. What What do you What I, are I, your, your my view? Words? Yeah, yeah I, I completely agree with you, Dr. Jamla. The research and development has um, 
gone so far. Like I think, if I remember correctly, the discovery of Adam's CS13 enzyme was back in year 2001. It takes like 20 over years to actually develop this uh, recombinant Adam's CS13 uh, I mean, enzyme replacement therapy that finally can be in a phase three trials, Dr. Jamila. So I really thank to all the unsung heroes and scientists for their contribution to this really uh, such a little disease that last time we don't even understand it. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you.